Welcome to the 3D Printing Canada CR10S Pro BL Touch Installation Guide. Let's do a quick rundown of everything you'll need for this installation. You will need a 1,800mm extension cable, a standard BL Touch kit, a 3D printed BL Touch bracket with M3 bolts, the standard tool kit that came with your CR10S Pro, plus a couple extra tools. You need a Starhead screwdriver, and it's nice to have a pair of pliers. You will also need some zip ties, some labels or some tape, and a pair of clippers. Let's hit the ground running. Start by removing the two screws on the bottom of the printer on each side. Flip the printer over, and then you can remove the rest of the screws on the bottom. There's quite a few of them. There's no need to remove the feet, so don't bother. Once all the screws are removed, the bottom should slip off nicely. And with that, it's time to start wiring. Let's inspect our BL Touch cables. On the right hand side here, you'll see a cable that's five pins that will connect directly to the BL Touch. On the left, we have a three pin JST connector and a three pin JST XH connector with two wires in it. Looking at the bottom of the printer, follow the ribbon cable up beside the power supply. You'll notice that there's two holes right beside it. Let's fish the five pin connector of our BL Touch extension wire through that right hand side hole. To make the cables compatible with the CR Tennis Pro, we have to do a little bit of a modification to where the pins are on the three pin JST connector. We want to switch around the red, which is in the center, and the brown wire connectors, so that brown is in the middle. Start by taking your flathead screwdriver and prying up both the tabs on both of the connectors. They should slide out easily. Don't force it if it's not coming. You might need to pry up the tab more. Switch the red and the brown connectors. Now it's time to plug in our connector that we just modified. You'll notice that there's a row of pins right beside all the stepper motor inputs. What we want to do is we want to plug our three pin connector into the bottom three pins of the row so that orange is on the inside, red is on the outside, and of course, brown will be on the inside pin. Our second wiring step is to plug in the Z limit connector. The Z min terminal is labeled with a Z minus sign and it's right beside the Y-min terminal as well. Take your connector and plug it in. There's only one right way to do it, so don't worry about getting it backwards. Either way, the white wire should be facing the inside of the board, whereas the outside pin should have nothing on it. Remove the cover for the breakout board. This is located on the left-hand side of the printer, where the X motor and the extruder motor is mounted. There are two screws on the top, and one screw on the bottom. In the BL Touch kit, there is a hardware bag, and inside that hardware bag, there is a jumper. Locate it. We are going to need to unplug the connector for our stock capacitive sensor. It has a little hook securing it, so take your finger, push on the hook so that it releases, and it should very easily wiggle out. This is where our jumper comes in. This jumper is going to bridge two of the pins and help the BL Touch sensor work properly. These pins are going to be the two that are furthest away from the outside of the daughter board. Push it in and take your time, make sure it's seated properly. To be honest, it took a couple takes to get this shot because I kept missing the pins themselves. On closer inspection, this is what it should look like. Now that you have your SD card loaded up with the LCD firmware, we're going to insert it in the back of the LCD in the SD slot. Make sure it clicks in properly. Plug your printer in and give it some juice. You'll see the printer do some formatting and load on the files. Do not turn off your printer until you see the words END in capital letters at the top. As well, never unplug the SD card while the printer is still on. Okay, there's END, we can turn the printer off. 
With the printer off, you can remove the SD card, and now we are officially done with our modifications underneath the printer. For the remaining steps, I prefer to keep the printer bottom off, just in case there was a bad connection or something else that needs to be looked at underneath the printer. Let's get started with our hardware installation. Start by removing the front fan shroud. It's only two screws on the top. Move it off to the right hand side. Here's where our pliers come in handy. We need to loosen the upper left hand wheel of the X gantry. Use your pliers or a wrench to secure the nut in the back and then use your Allen key to loosen the screw. Let's take the screw all the way off. While we're here, we can remove the timing belt from the clips in the bottom. At this point, you should have enough free that the whole gantry system should just come off. Holding the gantry in one hand, take the other hand and unscrew the two Allen keys holding on the capacitive sensor. Clip the zip tie holding it all together. To fully remove the capacitive sensor, we need to clip the other two zip ties on the x-axis gantry and any other zip ties that may be in the way of that cable chain. Locate the wire we unplugged before and you can start fishing it through. Loosen up the protective shroud and a little bit of a tug will do it. Be patient and don't force anything. It's still a perfectly good sensor, so put it aside somewhere safe. Now it's BL touch time. Let's take our 5-pin connector from the BL Touch and we're going to start at the extruder side and feed it through all the way to the hot end. To assemble our BL Touch bracket, there are two M3 bolts that we need to put into two slots in the bracket. Line them up carefully and with a blunt object and a little bit of force, they should pop into place. Let's plug in the BL Touch before we mount it into the bracket. The connector should be oriented with the little silver tabs on the outside and it should slip into place nicely. Make sure it's snugged in from both sides. You can use a blunt object to very lightly press it in as well. Flip it around and gently press it into the bracket. If you notice it's not going, you may have to shave away the inside of the bracket with a knife or a file. Don't risk damaging your BL Touch. Let's take a look at the rest of our hardware pack that came with the BL Touch. Inside there are two nuts and two bolts and that's what we're going to use. The nuts should slip neatly into the slots in the bottom of the bracket. Do what you need to do to get the nuts and the bolts threaded together. Once you have it loosely threaded you can use a screwdriver to secure it the rest of the way. Repeat for the other side. Now it's time to attach our completed BL Touch mount to the X gantry. We are going to use the existing holes that used to hold on the capacitive sensor in the back. Start by carefully threading on the innermost bolt. Line it up with the hole in the bracket and make sure it threads onto the nut that we had installed earlier on the bracket properly. Don't tighten it all the way, but once you're satisfied that you have a hold, install the other one. Once you can see that both of them have threaded on, tighten them both up. Time to remount our wheel that we had taken off earlier in the opposite order. Put the bolt through, put the spacer on, then let's put our wheel on and we'll tighten up the nut. Have a feel to make sure that things are running smooth. Because our belt used to be tensioned, in order to reattach it, we are going to have to loosen the tensioner on the right hand side of the printer. Loosen the two screws holding it on, and it should become free. 
After doing this, it should have enough slack that it should be easy to loop the belt back into the slot on the gantry. To retension it, take an Allen key and shove it between the extrusion and the tensioner. Put some force on it and then tighten up those bolts. Remount the fan shroud with the two screws you used to take it off. Be careful not to pinch any wires. At this point, we can revive our cable management. Zip tie the arrangement to the Capricorn tube. Make sure that the cables follow the general path of the Capricorn itself. Reinstall the stock clip in the middle. I think that Creality has included this to avoid fatigue from constraint of the wires. Two more zip ties. We need to reinstall the zip ties on the extruder assembly. Let's reinstall the breakout board cover. Make sure that the BL Touch cables are going out the side of the printer through the cover. As you can see here, I have somewhat successfully pre-installed the screws to make it easier for me to screw it on. And don't forget that screw in the bottom. What to do with our BL Touch cables? There are many solutions to this, but I like to use labels to simply adhere the BL Touch cables to the bottom of our cable assembly. This doesn't constrain things too much and allows you to route them properly. One more near the bottom and it should be good. It is important to keep the BL Touch cables at the bottom away from the rest of the assembly because they could become very easily tangled in the bed. Flip your printer over again. If we want a good installation where we're sure things aren't going to get unplugged in the bottom, we want to secure the BL Touch cables properly. Make sure that the cables aren't snagged on anything or aren't tugging on anything. And let's take some zip ties and clean this up. There aren't many great anchors for the BL Touch wires in the bottom, but there are some great wire assemblies that we can secure the BL Touch wires to. Look around and see what's available. Our main goal here is to prevent the wires from being tugged out of the motherboard if something happens to tug on them from the outside. You can leave this to very last again, but if you're super confident in your wiring and you think things are good, you can put the bottom back on. After uploading your firmware, turn the printer on. If things are all good, the printer should load as normal. To start calibration, go to Settings, and then Leveling. The printer should start on its own. It's a good idea if you're unsure if you're wiring to touch the BL Touch while it's in midair and see if the Z-axis reacts to it. In this case, I have tested it, but for a first run, it could be wise. Now to set the Z Home Offset. Press the Z Home button and the BL Touch should probe the bed. After the head has come to a rest, take a piece of paper and put it underneath the nozzle. Move the paper back and forth and press the Z minus button until you start to feel a bit of a grip. It should be enough that it feels a bit rough, but not enough to stop the paper fully. After that's done, press Z Home again to save that setting. After that is complete, you can press the measuring button to gather some leveling data. The BL Touch is a great overall sensor. It is highly accurate and repeatable, and isn't affected by things like reflections off the bed or heat. Those features, tied with features from the community in the Tiny Machines firmware, 
helps make the BL Touch and the CR10S Pro a winning combination. We hope you enjoy your BL Touch and we hope you enjoyed this guide.